Hi, I'm Nicholas Fevolo, and this is just really an introductory video about pea breeding. I'll show you what project I have going on, and maybe it'll give you some ideas for your own. If you start in winter, you can usually get two cycles a year, if not three. So that means you can go from seed to seed two times, if not three times, if you use a greenhouse, which is really useful when plant breeding because things can take a bit of time. This project, I'm working with the purple potted trait. I'm trying to in improve its flavor. A lot of purple peas, when you see them described in seed catalogs, will often say, makes a great soup pea. I think that's a euphemism for crappy flavor. <laughs> so I have some of those soup peas here, but I have some sweet peas here as well, and I'll just kind of just kind of chronicle uh, what's going on here. In January, with controlled heating, I can heat these easier than I can heat my pots. I germinated these in trays. There is a yield penalty when you transplant peas, especially if they spend too much time in the pot. But in these initial phases, I don't need a lot of seed. I don't need a high seed yield, so the penalty for me is fine. I germinated them here and I put them out in a cold frame in late January, and they went through about 20 to 25 frost cycles. So people will often ask, what is the frost tolerance of, of a pea? And when they're in their young phase, when they're in their, their seedling phase, they're very frost tolerant. These went down to about 24, 25 degrees Celsius and somewhere between minus four and minus three Celsius without any damage at all. So I didn't even record the temperatures because I could see they were doing fine outside. So I'm gonna transplant them up. When they flower, I'm going to make the appropriate crosses, which I'll explain here in a minute. And when those flowers do come, I'll make another video on how to actually cross peas. So, here we go. This pea that I named Brianza because I collected it in the area of Italy called Brianza. And the farmer who had, had given it to me at a, at a seed swap had described it to me the way most Italians will describe their personal varieties. Very sweet and very tender. I mean everything. Everything an Italian describes is sweet and tender. It was neither sweet nor tender. But agronomically, it was great. It had robust roots, great yield, the appropriate height that I wanted, but the peas in all of their eating forms, whether fresh uh, for, for shelling peas or even a soup pea, they just were not flavorful. So I have this, this pea, which may be a land race, maybe modern. It's not really easy to tell. The names are all, often lost when they're traded like this. I'm going to be crossing that to a pea called Utrillo, or Utrillo in Italian. And that is a market standard here for fresh shelling pea. It's an excellent pea disease resistant, very f excellent fruit-like flavor when you get the harvest at the exact right time. The flavor is great and it has the right height and it's an early pea. I also have a uh, French land race, an heirloom called Caruby, which would be pronounced somewhat similar in French. I don't speak French. Uh, this is a taller pea. I'd like to lower its height. And for a pea like this, I may have to do what's called back crossing. So I may have to cross it and then cross again and cross again until I increase the sweetness while retaining the purple pod. So I'll get into back crossing it some other time. It's a little more complicated here than we should probably get into right now. This is the Rondo, also a modern pea, a little later than Utrillo, the other modern pea. And I'm just gonna pot them up. And I can't really stress enough when you're work, saving seed or working with anything to label, label, label. These are always labeled accordingly because you can lose track of things, you know, you know, really within seconds. So this is Utrillo. No, I'm sorry, this is Brianza. Okay. So there is a yield penalty, as I had explained. So you may not want to produce your food like this by transplanting like this or on your farm, but it is really useful in the greenhouse. You'll also, if you're making requests from a seed bank or a gene bank, you'll be given a very small amount of seed. You know, and the, the germination rates on some of that seed sometimes isn't so great. So you might not want to plant it outside where it, where it get beaten up and not not germinate well. So you may want to start those kind of projects in the greenhouse. Here's Karubi. So at this point, I'll go and find some stakes to support the plants because they'll flop over otherwise. And I'll be making another video when we start crossing flowers. So good luck out there. Ciao.